going on guys today we have a music video breakdown and tutorial this is asap ferg green juice this was directed by valentin petit who if you guys remember directed the asap ferg floor seats music video which i actually made a full tutorial on um, a year or two ago whenever this came out there's some really amazing things i want to talk about so if you are new here what we're going to be doing is checking out a few specific parts i'm going to talk about them give you a quick breakdown as to what i think they did to accomplish that visually and then we're going to hop into some different editing softwares 3d softwares and i'm going to show you some easy examples of how you can recreate them yourself so if you do enjoy slap a like on this video it means the world to me it helps boost this video with the youtube algorithm which allows me to do this for a living comment below what you'd like to see next so let's go ahead and play this from the start and already you're seeing some really amazing things happen and this is a very reoccurring theme that you see with the visual effects for this music video where you have these sort of weird play-doh style choppy looking scenes and the camera is able to travel through that and then transition into this real life footage that you're seeing here i think this is actually a 3d scan still so you'll see if i go frame by frame here exactly what that looks like here is what our transition looks like of this 3D recreation. And whenever I say 3D recreation, it may seem confusing to a lot of you, but what they did is 3D scan these different rooms, environments, and people. So that's gonna be one of the biggest things we talk about in the tutorial portion, how you can 3D scan using different free applications, how you can match them up with your real life footage, how you can use these, create these matrix-like transitions so you can turn your real life footage into these frozen statues. I do wanna mention the official work flow um, and the tools that were specifically used by Ruben Fro, who was the person who did all of the point cloud work for the actual Green Juice music video. He has a few videos on his channel as well. You should also follow him on Instagram. I'll leave all of that down below. Some really beautiful work um, with different point clouds. You'll see that he used 360 cameras for the photogrammetry, running everything in Unity with a shader that he developed to render the point clouds in a more cinematic way. And I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but do not worry. It is possible to do this without 3D cameras, without using Unity. I'm actually gonna just use royalty-free 2D footage and I'm going to use Blender for this. I will mention all of the alternate methods, but back to the breakdown. Whenever you have that 3D scan in that 3D environment, there's so many different tools built into a 3D software to make it look interesting. For for example, you can add in different lighting, you can add in these different matrix-like filters, you can scan the different 3D geometry of everything. And you can see how they even use masking to sort of seamlessly blend together these two worlds where this is our 3D scan. You can tell by all this choppy geometry and we'll go more in depth with that a little bit later. And this is our real life footage. So before we do continue, I just wanna say why I really like this video so much. They pay attention to unique technology, they pay attention to new things, and they apply it in creative ways. I see a lot of you guys talking about how music videos are oversaturated, people using the same exact effects. If you guys are a music video director, you wanna make a great video, but you don't know where to start, familiarize yourself with the different techniques in the visual arts scene. Even if you don't know about everything, having a network of people that you know can create unique things even if you're just following them on instagram can lead to amazing things so pay attention to a lot of these tools that we're going to talk about always be looking for that new thing that you can apply to your videos to make something new now another really cool shot here um, where they take this phone and just toss it out the window i don't even think they're physically tossing anything really out of the window. This is of course a fully CGI phone and you can see it's a little shout out to the director here. What I think they did to accomplish this shot is actually take one of those high speed drones and just have that fly out of the window. I'll throw some different drone footage here so you can see some of the amazing things you can do with, with these high speed racer drones. They have the little racer drone part here and then they do a little bit of masking to bring in their 3D scan environment. Now this entire sequence that you're gonna see here is very matrix-esque, creating these different point clouds, point cloud 3D environments. And if you don't know what a point cloud is, let me just slowly go through here. You can see obviously this is a point cloud. This is a point cloud of a New York subway. Point cloud is the most basic form of a 3D of a 3D object, a 3D model. Each of these points contains several measurements. So again, pretty much just data taking images from the real world and plotting them within 3D space. You see this used a lot in architecture. You see it used a lot in um, in 3D walkthroughs for real estate. And there's actually a lot of really interesting things you can do with free 3D softwares to create your own point clouds. And then of course, 
we're going to style the point cloud so they look matrix-esque and add in these little transitions like this. All right, so we're going to talk all about 3D scans, point clouds, creating transitions out of that. We're also going to dive into After Effects and talk about a little bit more about the matrix styling. So we'll mix together the point clouds, but we're also going to talk about some of these different channel glitches that you see here, some easier, more familiar things that you guys will be used to and probably enjoy if you're a longtime watcher of the channel. So that's the basics of it, guys. Again, mixing real life footage with 3D scanning. Now that we've talked about what it is, let me show you how you can actually do some of this stuff. Whenever I say 3D scanning, it may not resonate with you. So we'll talk about some different free tools that you can use to actually 3D scan something. Then we're gonna just hop into Blender, which is a free 3D software any of you can pick up. And we're gonna light these 3D scans. We're going to put in different materials. We're gonna add that green juice aesthetic. Once we've successfully recreated that, we'll show you all the transitions from this world, this 3D scan world into real life. And I'll even show you how you can sew all of these together. When I say sew together, it really isn't that complicated. It's just placing these little 3D scan islands close to each other, animating a camera throughout. So let's get right into it. Let's get started with the point cloud. We're gonna create a point cloud, this sort of matrix-esque effect where you can see all the little data points. I went to pexels.com and grabbed some royalty-free footage. Of course, you can shoot this yourself. So for the point cloud, I just looked up Tokyo Street and I downloaded this clip here. So now that we have our footage, step number one is to actually export our footage as a PNG or TIFF sequence. So you can do this in pretty much any editing software, whether it be DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere, After Effects. I just loaded my footage into After Effects, went up to Export, add to Render Queue, and selected TIFF Sequence. Specify a folder where you're going to render out all of these frames and click Render. I rendered around 400 frames here, which is going to be fine once you have your TIFF or PNG sequence. The software I used to generate a point cloud, I went ahead and used Agisoft Metashape. I'm going to leave a download link below. There's a 30-day free trial in Metashape. To get started here, we're going to go up to Workflow and click Add Photos. And we're going to navigate to the TIFF or PNG sequence folder that we exported earlier. Go ahead and just highlight all of the photos and then click OK. So now we've added our photos. We're going to go back up to Workflow and we're going to click Align Photos. So it'll take some time, but allow the software to align your photos. You're going to see the sparse point cloud here. Now we're going to add some more detail to the sparse point cloud by going up to Workflow and we're going to click Build Dense Cloud. You guys can copy my settings here. On medium settings, it's taking me about 20 to 30 minutes to be able to render these out. So once you have your dense cloud, we're gonna go ahead and save this project file so we can come back to this later if we'd like to build a mesh from this. And then once we've saved the project file, we're gonna go up to file, export and export our points. Now the file format for the point cloud is going to really depend on the software that you want to bring this in for your rendering, your compositing. Again, I said I'm gonna be using Blender because that's what a lot of people are the most familiar with. But if you would like to use Unreal Engine or Unity to game development softwares that are also free, I'm gonna leave two awesome tutorials that I found down below that show exactly how to set everything up within, within Unreal or Unity. But for me, putting this into Blender, I'm just going to export this as a PLY file. All right, so let's fire up Blender. And of course, if you guys need to pick that up, if you're starting this from scratch, go ahead and download Blender from the link below. You're also gonna need to install some add-ons to be able to import this point cloud. So click the link below to download the free add-on. And there's a lot of different documentation that you can look into. It's a pretty cool add-on that has a lot of different features. But anyways, we're gonna download that zip file. And with Blender open, we're gonna go up to edit preferences, click down to the add-on section. We're gonna click install, and we're going to install this, this PLY cloud viewer. So once you've installed that, you can click this little arrow on the right to be able to view that. Now to import your PLY, what we need to do is just create a little control point for it. So I'm gonna click Shift A in object mode, and I'm gonna add in a normal empty. So select that empty. We're gonna go over to the PLY importer add-on, and we're going to navigate to the file that we exported from Metashape and click Draw. So now you guys can see what your point cloud is looking like, and if you need to, you can use the scaling tools on the left to be able to change things around. Now, the only unfortunate thing about this plugin, we can't just fire up the normal Blender render and expect to see our point cloud in the view. They do have a built-in rendering system for the add-on if you just click render or render animation, but you do have to be using an older version of Blender. I'm pretty sure 2.82, but don't quote me on that. Now, I found a nice little workaround from Jonathan Cron, and I do want to mention here, if you guys are interested in point clouds or doing a lot of the things that are involved within this tutorial, his YouTube channel is a huge resource, so I'm going to link the entire thing 
everything below along with the specific point cloud converter video that I'm going to be using here. So in this tutorial, exact same steps that we showed you so far, but he converts his point cloud into a particle system. And to make sure this conversion doesn't break your computer, change your subset to 25%, sphere subdivisions down to one, copy my settings here and click convert. The conversion shouldn't be too long and now you see everything is a lot more uniform. Next go over to the text editor and paste in the script from Jonathan Cron's video. And of course, again, all credit to him for this conversion method. Found this as the easiest way to get it going within Blender. If I went a little bit too fast for you, watch the quick five minute video he made that I linked down below. Now, if I switched over to the rendered view, we now have this easy point cloud conversion that we can put cameras in, animate around. So that's how we can create our point cloud. And I do want to mention here before we hop into creating a 3D mesh from our photogrammetry. If you guys want to do these transitions from your mesh or your point cloud into real life footage, what you can do in Blender is actually set up a normal camera motion track. And I'm not going to dive into all the specific steps, but I will leave a full guide on motion tracking down below. If you motion track your normal footage that you used to create the point cloud, you can then take your point cloud and align it with your motion tracked camera. It's a little annoying to have to do this by hand, but that's the way I was able to get it working within Blender. So that's how I lined everything up with the camera. Once I had that motion tracked camera set up in Blender with my pointing at my point cloud, I went ahead and just rendered that out, brought it back into After Effects where I was able to set up all of these transitions. So we'll revisit the transitioning sequences at the end of the tutorial. What I wanna do for now is just take a quick break to show you how to use that Agisoft Metashape software to create a 3D mesh. It's very similar to the point cloud. So if you want, you can just open up the project file that you already saved with the dense cloud, or I went ahead and just did this all from scratch using new footage. So if you guys want, you can go to workflow and generate a mesh straight from here, or what you can do if you want a more detailed mesh, you could always generate a dense cloud and then build the mesh straight from the dense cloud. But that's essentially all you have to do. Just click build mesh, let that go through. And then we want to align a texture for the mesh. So just go up to workflow and build texture. So now you have this 3D mesh, which we can bring into any 3D software, go up to file, export the texture first, and then go up to file and export the mesh. I've been exporting as a .fbx file. I'm actually gonna do all of the lighting, shading, et cetera, in Cinema 4D, because that is the 3D software that I prefer. Of course, you can do everything I'm doing in C4D in Blender at this stage once you have your mesh. So again, feel free to use whatever 3D software you prefer. We're just adding basic lights and some other basic things. The process is pretty self-explanatory. I recommend you guys have some decent 3D experience knowing how to make different materials, knowing how to light your scene. I really just imported in the FBX and then I just started setting up some octane lights. I actually just grabbed a free photo scan off of off of Sketchfab, so I'll leave the link for that below, because I wanted a specific environment where I can mess around with windows, and I wanted, and I also wanted a clean 3D scan of a person, so I downloaded that from Sketchfab as well. So you guys don't have to do the photogrammetry parts if you don't want. If you want to, you can just grab free 3D models off the internet and experiment that way. Let me talk about how I made the sort of stone, this darker stone material that you see in the Green Juice music video on all of the people. So what I, so it's pretty easy. I just created a Cinema 4D Octane glossy material material, very standard. I just changed the I changed the diffuse color to black and to add a little bit of realistic rocky looking texture if all you have to do is just add a noise shader to the bump so in octane if you click open node editor a little green section of the nodes you can drag in a noise connect that to your bump and just start messing around with some of those settings if you want to make the detail a little bit more fine just go ahead and click uv transform as well as projection and you can lower the scale on those settings to increase the level of detail so i thought that looked really cool and i didn't actually just drop that straight on the model. I actually created a Cinema 4D Octane mix material. So I made that mix material. I dropped in the normal UVs that came with the file. So the normal texture of my scan. And then I mixed together that sort of rocky, glossy, dark texture. I thought that just helped retain a little bit more of the detail as opposed to just dropping this straight onto the mesh. I know I'm kind of brisking through this. My next upload is gonna be a full workflow and render setting for C4D Octane that I use. If you wanna know all about that, there's really a good amount of info that goes into it. To create the atmospheric fog that you saw in the green juice video, it's actually very, very easy with Octane. Purchase any VDB um, fog or cloud files. I know Travis David's an awesome YouTuber. He's created one of these packs. I think I bought that for like five bucks, 10 bucks, something like that. All I have to do is load in an Octane VDB volume. 
and then open up the file that I got from Travis Davids and then position that in my scene wherever I want. Of course, play around with the density a little bit, maybe change around the color of the scattering. Now I'm going to stitch together some of my photogrammetry meshes that I've been making throughout this tutorial. So my mesh that I created of these two people sitting in front of a TV and just kind of set them up like islands so that my camera animates um, and goes to the first little island and flies over to the second. And then I plan on creating a little transition from that 3D photogrammetry to real life. I also added in some motion blur, some other little camera tag things just to make things look more realistic. So let's move on to the After Effects portion where we transition from our 3D worlds to our 2D. And even if you guys don't know anything about 3D, even if all this photogrammetry stuff is confusing for you, you can just take these After Effects tips and apply them to your videos depending on whatever it is you are making. To be able to blend that with the point cloud that we made at the beginning of the tutorial, it was very simple. Again, I mentioned we did a blender motion track, so everything is relatively lined up, it's not perfect, but I just cut in some little glitch transitions so that it could pop from the normal footage to our point cloud relatively easily. In the Green Juice music video, they do a lot of rotoscoping so that uh, you have your real life footage popping in and mixing with the 3D world a lot. They also have this little segment here where we go from this point cloud to this matrix sort of glitchy, article shooting everywhere segment. To be able to do something like that, it's actually very simple. Just double click on your footage and use your roto brush tool. And if you guys are if you guys need to learn about the roto brush tool, I've probably made 100 videos, 100 video tutorials in the past talking about it. It's very very simple. You just use your green brush to select whatever it is in your footage that you want to isolate and then you go through frame by frame and just make any little adjustments. Again, if I'm going too fast here, just watch any of my tutorials. We talk about it all the time. Once you've isolated whatever you want to isolate with your roto brush, to give them this particle look that you see on ASAP Ferg, I used the card dance effect, which is which is built into After Effects. All you have to do is drag that onto your rotoscope clip. You want to bump up the rows and columns, set all of these gradient layers to whatever footage you're working on, and then go down to the Z depth or whatever depth you're trying to manipulate for this card dance particle look, and just play around with the offset and multiplier. You'll be able to see these little particle bits projecting towards the camera. If you want to have them sort of popping in and out like you saw in the, in, in the regular video, I recommend you keyframe them so that the values are moving pretty quickly and you have this pretty interesting animated look. You can also toss in a little curves effect if you want to make it green. Like in the normal music video, you can toss on a glow and raise the radius. Once you've done that, you're pretty close to what they did in the original music video. So pretty easy, pretty awesome looking particle effect that you can do all within After Effects and it mixes well with our point clouds and the overall theme of this video. Now another thing I did was actually generate a mesh earlier um, of this girl kind of moving her face around. And I'm going to talk about this very briefly. You guys can use the steps I showed earlier for generating the mesh with Metashape, or you can even use one of these apps, which I've talked about in my five shoe VFX videos with how good phone cameras are with LiDAR now being available in cameras. You guys can get some pretty good photo scans just straight from your phone and just email the file and start working off that. So that's an option if you don't want to go through the whole Metashape workflow. I actually did a little camera track within After Effects and use, and use the dynamic linking within C4D to just line up this distorted mesh that I generated with the normal footage. And instead of torturing myself trying to perfectly match the, the 3D face with the 2D face, what I did instead was just render one lined up frame and then I used a software called EB Synth, which is a free AI motion matching software. I'll leave my tutorial on that below. So again, I was pretty brief on that, but that is another possibility for using this workflow, using those AI tools. Like I said at the beginning, I think the real key, if you guys are thinking that music videos look saturated, there's always some new technology. There's always some new visual thing that you can experiment with. So have fun with this, guys. If you guys make anything cool, tag me on Instagram at underscore Max Novak. I think I'm going to talk a little bit about the basics so a lot of you guys aren't getting too overwhelmed. So expect to see some stuff like that from me. Anyways, guys, have a nice day. Have a nice weekend. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. And I'll see you in the next one.